Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Allah is the one who gives endless, endlessly. And without his generosity, without his love, his compassion, and his mercy, there would be no existence. And we must remember that we all, each and every one of us, came from him. He gave us essence and he gave us form. So he gave us a soul and he gave us a body. And the soul portion of us came directly from him. There was a time when all of the rays that are our souls were contained within him. And then he expelled them outside of his self, put form around them, and began creation, the creation of man. And he created man so that man could commune with him, so that man could know him. And what we have to know is that in addition to essence and form, there is also shar and khair, good and evil, halal and haram. And we have to be able to differentiate between these things. We have to be able to differentiate between that which is evil and that which is good, that which is permissible and that which is not permissible. And we have to understand the sections of what causes the things that are not permissible. We have to understand their nature and what they are. We have to understand mind and desire. We have to understand arrogance and karma, maya and illusion, lust, anger, miserliness, bigotry, envy, intoxicants, craving, murder, theft, all of the things that are loved by Satan, we have to know them because we have to know to stay away from them. And we have to know that if we find them, in us, we have to be able to rid ourselves of those tendencies and those attachment. In our passing through this world, we need to understand that this is a temporary phase in our existence. We came from Allah, we came into this world, and now our work is to come back to Allah and to learn the way to come back to Allah. We also have to learn that while we are in this world, we have to have a sense of contentment and sufficiency in what we're given. And this is called our risk. For each one of us, Allah gives us a small atom of nourishment that is sufficient for us and is all that we need. Satan tells us that we never have enough, that we always need more. We never have enough money. We never have enough women. We never have enough gold. We never have enough land. So wherein we came from Allah, we were with Allah, and we were within that realm, even within this earth, man threw it away. And he threw it away for the illusionary lusts that man thought he needed. And those illusionary lusts, those illusionary needs became more important than the connection between man 
and God. So instead of looking for our risk, that sufficiency, that contentment within us, that drop of grace from Allah, we began to accumulate the world. And whatever we accumulated was never a lot. There's a story that explains this. And it has to do with Suleiman, uh, Solomon, who asked one day, he said, Allah, I would like to feed all of the creatures in your creation for a day. And Allah said to Suleiman, it's not possible. Uh, then they discussed back and forth. And then Suleiman said, how about if I only feed the fish in the sea? And Allah said, you can try. Let's see what happens. So Suleiman got all of the people who were under his control to bring everything in his storehouses to the edge of the ocean, the edge of the sea. And he asked the fishes, because he could speak to the animals, to come forward and he would feed them. And one fish came out of the ocean. And it was a gigantic fish. And they began to pour all of the food from all of the warehouses into the ocean. And this one fish ate all of it. And as much as they poured in, he continued to eat. And he ate all of it. And soon they were running out of food. And there was enormous amounts of food. And Suleiman said to this fish, he said, you must be the biggest fish in all of the oceans. And he said, no, I have 70,000 brothers and sisters, and they are all 70,000 times larger than me. And then my mother is 70,000 times larger than any of us. And my father is 70 times larger, 70,000 times larger than my mother. And then Suleiman said to Allah, Allah, it's true. I cannot feed, nourish your creation. You have to take care of this work. And Gabriel came with an atom of risk and gave it to the fish, and the fish was satisfied. And what we need to learn from this story is that within our risk, within what Allah provides for us, there is sufficiency. But if we don't take what Allah supplies for us, it doesn't matter how much more we have. It doesn't matter how much we accumulate. It's never enough. All of the surplus is just straw for the nefs, for the lower self. And the lower self plays with these things but there is no satisfaction, there is no contentment. We need to be able to find that serene contentment that comes from what Allah provides. And that has to come from living a life that is halal and only taking what is appropriate. Patience is a big part of entering into the state of what is halal. Patience gives you the ability to withstand the time until your risk comes. And we need to understand that. So when we look for in the world is we shouldn't be looking to accumulate the wealth of the world. We shouldn't be looking to accumulate the different things within the world, the different riches within the world, the different gold within the world, the different wealth within the world, the different fame within the world. None of this will bring us satisfaction, although we believe it will bring us satisfaction because we are trapped by illusion. Look at how many famous people in this world who've accumulated enormous wealth and enormous fame have turned 
to drugs and turned to illicit behaviors in order to self-medicate themselves because they haven't found any satisfaction. Well, we have to know where satisfaction is found and satisfaction is only found through Allah. We also need to understand that Allah has shared everything of his with us, except for a few things that he's kept for himself. He's kept creation for himself. He's kept sustenance and nourishment and maintenance of his creation for himself. And he's kept the liberation judgment for himself. And he's kept the acceptance of prayer for himself. Everything else Allah has shared with his creation. So imagine the generosity of our creator. He has seen it fit to share everything that he has with us. Everything that he has, he has given and made available to us. So compassion is available to us. Mercy is available to us. Justice is available to us. But man has thrown this all away and has begun to live differently than when the rays were all with Allah that became souls. What happened is that once we entered into this world, instead of understanding the true unity of all mankind, the true oneness of all of creation, man began to separate himself. There were North Americans, there were South Americans, there were Europeans, there were Asians, there were Africans, there were Australians. And all of these people considered them somehow, themselves somehow different than other people. And as these differences began to increase among people, difficulties came into the world. Wars, conflicts came into the world. So Allah sent his prophets. Allah sent 124,000 prophets into the world. And the reason for their coming into the world was to once again inform man of the unity of all mankind, to form, to inform man of the unity of all the races, to inform man of the unity of all the religions, to inform man of the unity of all of existence and their need to understand the unity of all of existence. Now, the prophets stopped coming about 1400 years ago, but the Ketubs did not stop coming. And the Ketubs were sent to uncover all of the things that were hidden, all of the things that were looked over or glossed over by the religions, and all of the things that the religions had done to the world that were contrary to unity. The Ketubs came to restore unity into the world again, to restore man's understanding of the unity of all mankind and of the love that all mankind was supposed to have for each other. The world had entered into what is described as the sin of separation, the sin of making oneself separate from the rest of mankind, making a religion separate from the rest of mankind, making a race separate from the rest of mankind, making a nationality separate from the rest of mankind. Man had lost his sense of unity, and the Ketubs came to once again explain unity 
and to bring unity into existence. And who are these Ketubs? They are manifest levels of divine consciousness. So in the form of manifest man, the same as all of us, came this consciousness from Allah's light that came into the world to explain truth outside of illusion, to explain the understanding of truth outside of the perspective of illusion, to explain the understanding of truth without the influence of illusion, without the influence of arrogance, without the influence of miserliness, without the influence of selfishness, without the influence of separations. Satan's work is to separate, to separate me from you, to separate one country from the next country, to uh, separate one religion from the next religion, to separate one nationality from the other nationality, to create conflict, chaos, and war. This is his work. This is what he loves. He is not looking for peace to be among men. But we, each of us, have to overcome his interaction. We have to overcome his influence. And how do we do this? By sticking to what's halal, by understanding what's permitted and understanding what's not permitted. So we have to incorporate Allah's qualities, Allah's gracious nature into our nature. We have to understand that we have to somehow go from a understanding of the world within its illusory nature to the truth. And we have to be able to know what the difference is between the truth and illusion. Now, this is very difficult for man because man is born into illusion. He's raised by illusion. He's nurtured by illusion. His parents have lived their whole life in illusion, and all of the people that he meets are living in illusion. So how do we break the tie to illusion? We break the tie to illusion by finding a jnana, a wise sheikh, who is not affected by illusion, whose perspective is outside of illusion, whose view of humanity is outside of Satan's influence, who is not corrupted by self-dealing, who is not corrupted by need, who is not corrupted by selfishness, who is not corrupted by trying to make himself bigger. Someone who is here for the purpose of bringing truth to humanity and bringing Allah closer to the reality for each of us. When we're thirsty, our tongue tells us we're thirsty. There's a dryness in our mouth. And we drink water to quench our thirst. We have to have a thirst for the truth. And we have to be able to create a faculty within ourselves that can tell the difference between illusion and truth that can tell the difference between reality and that which is illusory. We need to be able to create a sense within us that senses truth, that senses reality, that senses 
God, God's qualities, but not just senses them, understands the importance of them and understands that their importance is greater than anything else that we know in the world. We have to be able to maintain a balance so that we can consistently focus on that truth. You know, we walk through the world and it's a very fine line. To the left is illusion. To the right is Satan. And here we are in the middle. And as we walk this earth, we can't look to the left and we can't look to the right. Our focus has to be on the truth. And our focus has to be on what's truly important for us. And we have to develop the capacity to understand what's truly important for us. And if we can't develop that capacity, to understand what's truly important for us, we will fall waste to the torpors of the world. We will fall waste to the influence of Satan. We will become enamored by the various illusions that hold out joy for us that in truth is our demise. Bawa called these the billboards that lead to hell, the advertisements for what we want and what we should have and what we think we need that we end up chasing. You know, if somebody thinks they need something, they can spend years and years and years trying to accomplish that need and simultaneously lose touch with reality because the drive to obtain what it is that they wanted is so great. The drive to obtain what we think we need becomes so great that it overwhelms our good sense. It becomes an obsession. And we have to be very careful of our obsessions. Obsessions lead to fanaticism. Fanaticism leads to our demise. Now, the interesting thing is, these obsessions and these fanaticisms can run the entire gamut of the human experience. Man can become obsessed with titles. Man can become obsessed with women, with gold, with real estate. But man can also become obsessed with religion, where the religion becomes more important than God, where man begins to think that he needs to protect God's religion, and where man becomes insulted on behalf of God for what he perceives are insults to the religion and has to act on God's behalf to maintain the integrity of the truth. Man cannot maintain the integrity of the truth. Only <clears throat> Allah can maintain the integrity of the truth. And what we have to do is to surrender to Allah. We have to act on behalf of Allah. And the main thing that we can do on behalf of Allah is be an assist to humanity. Because this is what God does. He gives, sustains, and maintains his creation. And if we can act, as assistance in that work, then we have truly surrendered to him 
and we are truly doing his work. So if we, each of us individually, can be compassionate towards others, we are doing God's work. And in doing God's work, in doing work on behalf of others, a lot of things happen to us. <clears throat> As we work on behalf of others, we lose the thought of ourselves. And as we lose the thought of ourselves, we lose the connection to our mind, which is constantly telling us how to make ourselves bigger. So when we're busy helping others, when we're constantly in the work of assisting others, we then begin to lose ourselves and can surrender to truth. Now, Allah has given us certain rules within this world. And there are rules for the world, and there are rules for what is beyond the world. He's told us that we must declare our faith to God and God alone, that we must pray, that we must give charity, that we must fast, and that we must go on pilgrimage. But he's also told us that there are another set of rules that take us into the next phase. We must learn how to stop seeing everything with these eyes, but be able to see with the eyes within the eyes so that we can understand the truth that is beyond form. He's told us to stop smelling with this nose, but to smell with the nose within the nose so that we can get the essence of the scent of reality, that we stop hearing with these ears alone, but hear with the ears within the ears, which take us towards the wisdom of true hearing, that our taste goes beyond the taste of this tongue to be able to taste divinity and be able to taste the truth. And we have to develop a new voice, a voice that doesn't just speak about ourselves, that isn't just interested in who we are, but a voice that speaks the truth and is attuned to the resonance of reality and is able to interpret the resonance of reality into words that assists humanity. We need to be able to make that connection. And that connection happens when you make a connection with the Sheikh. The Sheikh has opened up his heart and his heart is connected to Allah. And because of that, there is a constant current that is coming through him from God. And if you make the connection with the Sheikh, that current then enters into you. And when you have that current, that means that the truth is moving through you now. And that current keeps you out of torpor, keeps you out of illusion, keeps you out of anger, keeps you out of arrogance, keeps you out of all of the things that Satan loves, because now you have a current of the truth running through you. So each of us has to make ourselves available to this current. And to make ourselves available to this current, the illusion of the world has to be blocked out from us. And we have to create a thirst for that truth. So some people have a thirst for cars. Some people have a thirst for food. Some people have a thirst for fame, a thirst for medals, a thirst for honors, a thirst for titles. We need to develop a thirst for Allah, 
a thirst for reality, a thirst for Hak. Hak is one of the names of God, and it means reality. We have to develop this thirst, and it has to become the driving force within us. It has to become the strongest intention within us. And then, in proportion to our intention, we will be given Allah's grace. So there's work for us to do too. Our work is to create the intention. Our work is to block out what is forbidden. Our work is to stay within the realm of halal. Our work is to do good and to understand what good is. Our work is to stop being so interested in ourselves and being interested in the world in the ones around us. Our work is to stop being selfish and learn how to be kind. Our work is to stop grabbing and learn how to be generous. Our work is to learn how to give in the way that Allah gives. As we develop this work, Allah gives us more grace. As we develop this work, Allah gives us more of what it is that we give out. And we need to understand this. So for those who think that when you give, you have less, we have to change that way of thinking. As you give, you get more. But you also have to understand at the same time what it is that's important in this world. The risk that God gives you, that which you need, that which, that which is primarily essential for you to maintain you, is one atom of his grace. It's a tiny, tiny speck that is not seeable. So this accumulation of wealth is fodder for the nefs. It's straw for the nefs. It's playthings for the nefs. It's playthings for the lower self that keep the lower self occupied and that cloud our true self, that hide our true self, that create veils for our true self. So we need to begin with, to learn how to be fully satisfied with what we have, to be fully content with what we have, to not be in a mode of striving for more and more and more, to understand that what we need is a tiny speck of God's grace. And that tiny speck of God's grace is going to be more fulfilling for us than all of the wealth of this world. All of the wealth of this world cannot satisfy us the way Allah's grace can satisfy us. When we begin to understand that, and when we begin to be totally satisfied with our station and our position, we can then turn ourselves towards God and turn ourselves towards doing God's work because we realize that everything that we need will be given to us because we are doing God's work. Everything that we need will be taken care of for us because we are doing God's work. And if we stay in that state of patience and satisfaction and contentment, we won't lose our focus. But if we lose our patience, if we lose our sense of satisfaction, if we lose our sense of focus, then we will think that we need more of something. And as soon as we think we need more of something, we begin the chase. And the chase puts us outside of the truth, puts us outside of reality, because in truth, we don't need anything else. In truth, 
We don't need something else. In truth, we don't need to accumulate. It's already all here. But our mind tells us otherwise. And if we believe our mind, we will begin that chase of accumulation that chase of need for wealth, that chase of need to be satisfied in other ways than to be satisfied through God's grace. And if we do that, we enter into Satan's realm and we are ready to be picked off by him. Because now we have the tendency that he's looking for. And what is that tendency? That tendency is greed, that tendency is need, that tendency is desire. And as long as those things roll around within us, we are open to his influence. But if we can do away with greed, if we can do away with desire, if we can do away with the mind, if we can do away with all of the thoughts of our interaction and our attachment to this illusory world, Satan has no way to strike at us. We're unavailable to him. We come under God's protection because we are content with God alone. It's when we lose our contentment with God alone that we are susceptible to the torpor of the world. So we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful that we walk the straight line. We have to be very careful that we stay within what's permissible. We have to be very careful that we don't step outside of what God has allowed. And if we can do that, then we are going vertically towards him as opposed to horizontally and stuck and rolling around in this world. We're not meant to roll around in this world. We're meant to go directly towards our Lord. We are here for the purpose of returning to where we came from, not to swallow the world. Two frogs, bullfrogs, were looking at each other, and they were in competition over a piece of bog. And one jumped at the other, and as he jumped at the other, the first frog opened its mouth and tried to swallow the second frog. And the second frog that was being swallowed kept expanding himself. So one was trying to swallow the frog and the other one was trying to expand himself so he couldn't be swallowed. And that's the fight of the world. We try to swallow the world or we try to stop the world from swallowing us by expanding into it. And eventually the two frogs burst and that's eventually what will happen to us. We can't swallow the world. We can't conquer the world. It's unconquerable. Ask all of the great conquerors who tried to conquer the world. What happened to Napoleon? What happened to Hitler? What happened to Stalin? What happened to Mao Tsung? What happened to all of these people? They all passed away. That's the nature of this creation. So before we hit that point where we have to go, we have to make sure that we are following the bridge towards our Lord so that when we get to the end of that bridge, our Lord is waiting for us as opposed to this world. And that has to do with our intention and the intention that we've set up for ourselves, the intention that we have set up for our life. So let's set a direction for our life, a direction towards God, a direction towards truth, an intention towards reality. And as that intention grows, our wisdom will grow and God's grace towards us will grow. He loves the ones who love him. He is content with the ones who are content in him. And he is here out of his love for us. He is constantly intermingled with us, and he is constantly looking for us to come closer and closer to him. Let's fulfill the intention that the Sheikh had for us. Let's fulfill the intention 
that God has for us. Let's understand that truth and let's find that truth. And may Allah make it easy for each of us to walk the straight path and to come to know him. Amin, amin, ya Rabbil Alameen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.